why he's still here. I know, I tried killing him. You're listening to Inside Real Estate, oh, your source man. for all things mortgage and real estate related. Way too the slow. show that brings you all the hottest topics and That's insights right. directly from those <laughs> who know it most. Now sit back and enjoy the show. So there's a fly, there's like this fruit fly that, that was here last week in this office, and it's still here. I don't know if it's the same. There it is. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Oh, you, <laughs> come on, bro. You gotta go the slow approach. What's man. up, everyone? <laughs> Paul Apostolakis, Salvatore Cusmano, Brad Weisgerber. You look really sharp today, Brad. Uh, we are inside real estate. Uh, Dude, I'm wearing the company sweat. <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, so super excited. We got uh, kind of an old friend, actually, uh, Ali Barry from uh, Quest Realty. Uh, Ali uh, start, uh, started the company. I, we'll talk about the company, but you've done a really interesting job, you know, kind of ch changing the uh, uh, how people kind of look at how they do real estate. So I, want, I really want to talk about your model because I think it's interesting. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the news and how they're portraying the, 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 the mortgage market. Uh, I did also want to talk about an interesting article that... Yeah, we'll get that guy before. That uh, that uh, banks are losing market share at a at a really fast clip. So I, I want to kind of get into that a little bit. But first and foremost, Ali, thank you for doing the show. We appreciate you having you on. Yeah, thank you um, for having me. Tell us a little bit because obviously, so so just so the audience has uh, some background. So Ali and I kind of grew up at Quicken Loans way back. When did you start there? Uh, two thousand and six. So I was there two thousand three, a little bit earlier than you. Um, high level banker was there for for how many years? Uh, just over five. Five years. So yep. me too. Yeah. But so. Um, you know, five years in that environment, I think, uh, speaks volumes because a lot of people, there was a lot of turnover back then, right? It was, a oh, tough, yeah. it was tough. Five years then. is like 15, 15 oh, dog years. <laughs> yeah. Quick years. Yeah. So, uh, did a lot of really good stuff. So you come from a mortgage background and probably learned a lot like myself from that experience. And so I wanted to kind of talk to you about, you know, what made you transition to the real estate side? Cause mm -hmm. that's interesting, right? Yep. Uh, and you know what, what the thought process was, and then we'll start getting into kind of, you know, you building your business and how that started. So tell us a little bit about your background, how you, how you got into it. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, like you said, I was at Quicken for five years. Um, it was great. I mean, a, a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what did you think of it? Blah, blah. And yeah. Like, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without no that way. company, without yeah. a doubt. I learned so much and Totally agree. Grew so much when I, I was there. I was a kid when I started. Yeah, you can all say that, I think. Yeah, it's it's unreal. So then <laughs> when I left, um, I was honestly I, I worked at like a online. It was um, I gotta remember the name, not not guaranteed rate, but there was another online mortgage company. Yeah. Um, Amer Amerisave. Amerisave. Yeah. Maybe I think it was. Yeah. It was like it's funny that you don't I don't even you remember <laughs> it because it was like online and I was like working in my pajamas at home. It's it wasn't right. making any yeah. money, so yeah. it was like okay. Yeah. And then I always I have um both my uncles when I was younger were carpenters. Okay. So I have I have a lot of experience with that. So I was like you know what let me try flipping some houses right when got my real estate license I was like this could be fun. Yeah. Nope, never mind. Uh, so I, I had like one condo that I was like semi renovating, and my wife Summer was like, "You want to get a real job? Because this is not working out for you." I was yeah, like, yeah, you know what? I'm, yeah, your wife was like, "You don't have to." Yeah, yeah, Summer's so like, "I'm sick of paying the bills." Exactly. Turn, right? So, <laughs> yeah. um, I have I was able to get my broker's license, thankfully, because I had so much uh, his, history in a sister mm -hmm. industry, right? Yeah. So I d I could go get my broker's license right away instead of being a salesperson for. Three years. So you went straight broker. Yeah, and I would not recommend that to anyone, like, <laughs> for real, yeah. ever. Because yeah, how did you get past the the education part of it? Did you still I did, I do, did the, do the education, the but full if you education? have five years in a sister industry like uh, mortgages, uh, oh, even yeah. attorneys and things like that, you <laughs> can it. go get your broker's license before having to be a salesperson for X oh, amount of years. Gotcha. So. Um, it, I think they should take that away because yeah. you truthfully need to go work for a broker right. that knows what they're doing that can give you the the lay of the land, teach yeah. you, you know, the experiences you need and do that for years before you want to go and like do your own thing right. and teach other people. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, the so first, like, you're like, fuck it. I'm going to be a broker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. First couple of years, I went and worked for a small shop here in Royal Oak. Um, and it was, it was okay, but it was just like, I'm sitting at a desk with my broker's license, no, waiting no for support. people to walk in, yeah. no training. Right. Like I got a couple of leases here and there and I was like, this is really silly. Yeah. Went and started my own company. Um, First couple of years were rough, man. It was like, you know, a little business here. Thankfully, I have a big, big sphere, right? You Good know, network. like, yeah, 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 especially coming from that sister industry. Like, there's a lot of opportunity for people to refer you business to leverage that. Yeah. But even then, it was like, you know, 
little bit here, a little bit there. Right. And then, but it's real estate. It's like everybody wants it to be a a sprint and it's a marathon. It's a marathon. Yeah. You just build, 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 build. And then sooner or later, you get to a point where it's it's semi consistent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just built it up, built it up, had one agent, two agents over time. And now we're at 12. I think as of like two days ago, we're at 12 agents. Awesome, man. So we're not like. How long have you been open now? Uh, eight years. Eight years. Okay. Yeah. So That's awesome. we're not like two, the 200 agent office. But right, the crazy right. part about us is like we do we do more business than most offices that have 80, 90 agents. Right. It's not so growth for the sake of growth. It's it's a steady, quality. steady yeah. grind. Yeah, sustainable. I'm very, very big on finding the right people that have exactly the same mindset, the the right culture that are going to fit with our group, and most importantly, like the client service. Man, like, yeah, I'm dude. anal about it. You're like so. us. You have to be. Yeah. So yeah. that's exactly like us. Like we're very like we, we talk about this all the time. We, we don't want to hire just anybody, and not, not yeah. only that, they got to fit with our team, right? Team of killers. And, and our our they have to get on board with our process. Uh, killers, and they've got to be uh, our reputation's everything. Oh yeah, that's all we got, bro. Mm-hmm. So if you don't if you don't uphold our reputation in our business, like. There's some places that do a lot of volume that are that don't have the, the reputation. I think us coming from Quicken, where it was a lot of transactional business, right? So talk to me about that shift, because for me it was tough, right? I was so transactional for 16 years, bro. I was in the mortgage business, and all I did was transactions. I had oh, yeah. zero it was a residual referral business. I didn't know any real estate agents. I was just you know consumer direct and just busting it out. So you know when I made the transition, Sal actually helped me out a lot because Sal was already working on, on creating. I had to like learn how to be a human again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> is it's, that is that not true though? No, it definitely is, and I true. think it's hard for a lot of people because again, our agent base is really weird. Like half of our agents were mortgage bankers, oh, which no is really kidding. good for us wow. because we have a ton of experience when it comes right. like we can help the clients more than most real estate agents. Just yeah, because obviously we're great agents, but also like. They can rely on us to reiterate what their mortgage banker has told you them. Understand all facets. Don't step on toes, but like you know, follow right. it up. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it was it was tough, man, because you know, like when we were there, it was like you know, hey, your goal's fifty loans this month, right? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, yeah. oh my god, I got to speak to a thousand human beings to make that possible, yeah. right? Yeah. I I I got put on letter for getting thirty deals. Right? One night. <laughs> it's <laughs> like dial, 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 dial. But it's I mean, at the end of the day, like those expectations. Think about that at the time. When I was younger, I was like, man, this is crazy, right? Like, I, I can't do this. And now I look at it, and I'm like, the expectations were there in order to give us the, the right opportunity to succeed, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. they had to set crazy goals and things like that. But then we hit them sometimes. So they weren't that crazy, right? Yeah, it's interesting to me. A lot of us that grew up in that in that, that that period of time, that lived through that quick in period. It was a very interesting period, and, and a lot of people that haven't experienced it don't get it. It's almost like we all went to the same high school and we all had the same experience and we kind of all, all, all have this bond. But that was the craziest, most wild like time. Like you didn't have to be licensed when I was like, you know, I, I didn't no licensing, bro. From the outside, that is the most accurate description. I've never worked at Quicken. Yeah. But anytime I hear stories about Quicken, like uh, from like your generation, like my generation, like, like your, your class right? or whatever. Yeah. You have to think right. about what quick that is, is. The most accurate description is like you guys all went to the same high school. We all they went reinvented to the, same high the mortgage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, people were faxing documents, oh, yeah. mailing them, things like that. Bro, they didn't know what an internet mortgage was. But right. here's, here's the craziest part, right? So, like, and this goes back to your question about like the transactional and, and not um, kind of having that human interaction face to face. Or I had somebody come into when I was in the Southfield office, I had somebody come into the office that wanted, like, just not an appointment, just walked in and like asked the receptionist, is Ali Berry here? I want to talk with him. And yeah. I was like, like, that was the first time that ever happened. Yeah. And no. I was like, I was in like a, like a polo and like just, wasn't yeah. ready for it. Yeah, yeah. And again, I was like, it was young, so I was like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Freaked out. <laughs> I just went out, and sat with them, and then I afterward was like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. I should do that more often. Now he's right? got a sign out that says "Walk-ins welcome." Yeah, yeah bro. right. It it is weird. Yeah. No, when I I basically jumped, you know, corporate ship and and started my own brokerage and had nothing. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So yeah. it was like you got to figure out, you know, how to talk to people, talk to them face to face, go over numbers. If you don't know something on the spot, like how do you deal with that? Right. And I think that's the biggest thing that people struggle with is how do I answer a question that I don't know? Right. And the answer is don't answer it. Yeah. Right. Right. You don't don't answer. Put it on ice. Figure it out. For me, I think with real estate, it's a little bit different, right? Because you're not, um, it's not like you're going and meeting with um, complete strangers every day when you you start, right? So thankfully, when you when you jump into it, Mm -hmm. most of it is people that you're pretty, pretty familiar with. And you you can go on these appointments, you can go see houses, you can go to listing appointments. And really, you you for the majority already know these people. So it's, it's not that crazy. And looking at a house could be exciting. 
right. exactly. looking at a loan yeah. estimate. That's all it's everybody easy, It's not. really easy to <laughs> accentuate and excel the excitement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're looking an easy at like, well, unless people, you're looking at like people crap get geeked houses. about yeah. the, the house, but not the mortgage. Right. 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 Oh, oh yeah. Shit, I mean, if you cost me a lot when, money. You, when you come from a world <laughs> where you're selling numbers on pieces of paper that are fictitious, and then all of a sudden you have an asset that you can show them, I mean, it's like, oh, it's really nice. Do you want it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about this. So when I when I started doing real estate, my wife was still doing mortgages. Mm-hmm. So our, you know, we'd come home and like I got to the point where when I did get some steam, I was like. Hey, uh, I think you'd be better at this yeah. over here. <laughs> like every day when I when I come home and you're like on the phone because she worked from home. Like mm-hmm. you're on the phone and you're like frustrated and you're yelling, arguing with somebody about a quarter percent interest rate. Yeah. I was like, I don't really have that. Like I open a door and like show them a pretty kitchen. Right. And I trust then, you. And that's, yeah. That, a lot of the work, right? It's kind of the same thing as an appraiser, right? Like a lot of our work is not done when we're doing what we're doing, right? Yeah. Right. Open yeah, home, door. Comps. This is a nice house. <laughs> Great. But then the the grit, the work is done after like let me mm-hmm. find the comps let me call the agent go about it the right way let me have those relationships already solidified with that agent so you're going to get the house instead of the other five people right, right. so it's so how did different. oh did you have a question sorry no i was uh, gonna say that is where the the work is yeah it's, it's I never think a lot of it's never front facing it's always buyers and scenes. sellers fail to realize that too right and, and that you, was that was a little bit hard for me too right because when i did mortgages it was like there's no there's no like work on the back end right it's like it's for maybe follow-up but it was like, hey, this as a call, loan officer. As let's a loan be, officer, let's be clear. Yes, yeah. Like this call is the work. I gotta get. Right. I gotta get you to give me your, your credit card number, and then all of a sudden I get the well, package, and I'm good. Aside yeah. from that, explaining right, like that's the biggest thing with with the mortgage is like to get the commitment up front. They need to know the whole entire plan as opposed to like with the house. That's kind of like it, yeah. Like I have either I have that like forty five t- days yeah. to do all that. Yeah. Yeah. As mortgages, it was like I have forty. About forty five seconds to get it in, where they'll let <laughs> yeah. me stay yeah, right. home. There's yeah. there's two ends of that spectrum. They either have to really know all the details, or they have to really love you and trust you. Well, mm-hmm. a transaction yeah. is often like a handoff, right? Like maybe up front we get them pre-approved, and then the ball's back in your court until you find that house, right? Yeah, right. Once everything's locked up and you got the contract, the ball gets for the most part passed back to us until the end, right? So yeah. it's always like it, these these people need to know what to do. Oh, and yeah. that's sometimes the hardest part to explain. So I think that's a big differentiator, and I don't want to give away a bunch of secrets, but a lot of people, they do view it as, all right, we're getting pre-approval, now it's in your court, as opposed to it, it's a together. team, right? Yeah. So, like, you say it's in your court, but really, you're still calling that oh, we're client. We're still you're part of it, right? It's you're, not you're like it's just complete agent, handoff. But, but I get what you're saying. Like, you, yeah. your your job for the time being is right. really done at that point. You've gotten to that to that stage of the game, and now it's on that trusted real estate agent, right? Hey, like, mm. go do your job. Like, yeah. Get them out. Yeah, get, yeah, yeah. get them excited. Find them a house. And then when you find them the house, it goes back Bring to Bring it us. back to me, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right, so right. you have to be like – you have to be like – um <laughs> Even though I hate them, like the Golden State Warriors, don't be like the Knicks, right? Like pass, <laughs> pass it around, right? you know, like whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting, man. So the transition for you was like, so that's good that you decided to do that. So talk to me now. So I mean, obviously you've had this experience. You, you were a loan officer, high level loan officer. You did really good there. Then you decided to be real estate. Now you're doing really well as, in real estate. So talk to me about when you started the company. And we're figuring out the model, right? Yeah. Of how you wanted to have your business because there's we talk about this all the time. There's a hundred different ways to run an office. There's a hundred different ways to make money in this industry. There's a hundred different like places you can fit fit in, right? So what did you decide to like when you decided to make your model? How did you get into that uh, mindset? And what did you decide? Because I know your model is a little bit different. Yeah, for sure. So I think back to what we were saying, like the experiences that I had and the route that I went actually led me to kind of structure the company the way it is. So it's one of those things like you never change anything from right. the past, whatever. But yeah. sitting in an office in Royal Oak like that where – I had no training. I had really, I mean, I had one guy there that, you know, we actually still talk pretty regularly that um, helped me a little bit, but it was just like, figure it out, man, right? Yeah. And Google I was it. young. Sink I didn't swim. know. It was like, hey, here's your split. And like, take half of everything yeah. I, I make. And like, it wasn't a lot because half of nothing is nothing, <laughs> right? So <laughs> when, I, when I ventured out and I started the company, I really didn't have to think through too much about structure because it was kind of just me. Mm-hmm. And then when I got my first agent, I was like, oh, Not this is cool. I got an agent. Like, they're going to do some business. And then I really started to think like, okay, if I want to help people that were in my position, right? Like obviously the company has to be profitable and we have to make money in order to succeed and grow. But at the same token, like there's a big, there's a big gap between like profitability and what most companies are set up at on yeah. either side of the spectrum. Right. And the way I look at this, I talked a little bit about, it, but yeah, 
for me, there's there's basically two sides of things, right? And you're right. There's like a million other million like million uh, million. silly ploys that are coming out because things are getting tighter. Yeah. There's less business. So yeah. like, we're going to do this transactional blah, blah, blah. Like everybody's got this new model right. that's the best thing on earth. And you're crazy as an Full agent if you don't go do it, right? right? Yeah. yeah, whatever. I EXP. Oh, there's yeah. all these other things. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you're basically a recruiter, right? Mm -hmm. Like good thing you got into real estate to be a recruiter. Correct. Going to turn into pyramid schemes. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. for me, there's like, there's two spectrums, right? There's the brokerage, right? Your big boys, Keller Williams, Real Estate One, Max, mm -hmm. all these, like the true brokerage where it's like brick and mortar, come hang your license here. We'll give you some generalized training in a you know 200 person setting. And, and those are great, right? For a lot of people, especially like some top producers that don't want to be on a team that are been doing this for a very long time, like awesome. They already have their right? business. They don't need anything, right? Sometimes they're still a little bit over exorbitant on fees and things like sure. that, but whatever. Sure. Um, but there's not really any like hand holding. There's no leads. It's just like you go find your business, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Then you have the other spectrum of like, hey, we're a team that mm -hmm. is like we're taking fifty percent of everything you make forever, right? Doesn't matter how much business you do. Your name's not going on your sign. It's not going on. And this is this is generalized, right? Like some teams are a little different. For sure. But for sure. We're just for the going, most yeah, yeah, part. It's yeah. like. As an agent, like you have no recognition for yourself unless maybe you do a post on Facebook, but right. like you, your your, your, team your brand lead, is not there. Your brand is the other guy's brand. Yeah, but right. for some people, and it I works. call I call it the employee mindset, right? Like right. some people have to have somebody to to dictate their day. Come in at mm -hmm. nine a.m. Do this. Do it this. comes down to the agent and what they need. Right? Yeah. Really, here's your leads, yeah, yeah. right? So I yeah. have people. I've I've had, I've had a couple agents that work for me that I said, hey, like this isn't for you. You need to go find that team that is like hand you everything and tells you you have to be because they don't have the self accountability mm -hmm. right? right you have to be here at 9 a.m till 4 p.m you have to prospect from this time to this time like they need that's the structure not who we are yeah, yeah, the yeah. employee right. yeah exactly yeah. so and you and i talk about this like there's certain agents when they ask us where they should like they're, like they're thinking about making a move or whatever like we have to look at the agent and say okay we know you'll you fit need best. Lead, you don't need right lead. Yeah, you'll you, fit who best are in you this office, right? Right. right like what kind, are well, you a business owner or are you uh, right. Do you well, like that employee role? Right. When you're an employee, when you leave, I mean, you you can only go to certain employers, right? Mm -hmm. Like ones that can provide you all yeah. everything you had. Otherwise, you got to start over. And right. I think that's where a lot of the difference. I, I find <clears throat> I see a lot of the people that are very successful, right? Especially in real estate. To me, is people that did mortgages. I think mm -hmm. because you have mm -hmm. that experience and you're not yeah. afraid to, to get on the phone, yeah. you're not afraid to go find that Prospect. business. Yeah. Exactly. So without prospecting, especially in the first part of your career, like good luck. Like it's not every day. Like you're at your buddy's house and he's like, "Oh yeah, I had seven people that were talking to me about buying houses the other day." Like, yeah, I would not. I would not be able to do this if I didn't have that muscle memory of doing the hard work every single day. Right. Yeah. yeah. But and I've, fa I've fallen off a little bit. I mean, we, we all do, but you, you <laughs> kick yourself in the ass. You're like, it takes me about twelve minutes to get back into it. On yeah. The phone, but exactly. you're a broker owner. I mean, you've been doing it for eight years. How many How many transactions do you still do? So it's funny we were just looking at this right because I have tools where I can look everything up in the in the yeah. drop of a dime right so yeah, you're a metrics guy last year for me I was like I'm not going to do business right because we were in a phase where I really wanted to focus on growth growth but not so much agents not not acquiring agents because I've never really focused on I've never recruited any agent ever business development right yeah it's it's more about like efficiency of our processes let me figure out how to get more business from my agents and and grow the agents right yeah. how, getting them to do more business and then when they don't need me anymore. I'll go find another agent, right, right? Right. That kind of thing. So for me, I didn't do a lot, but then last year, that was two years ago, last year I looked at it and like without trying from that referral business yeah. and now that I've grown such a big past client base and referral network and things like that, I think I did like 27 transactions yeah. as a broker. I was yeah. like, ooh. And like me, me and Matt were joking about it. I'm like, man, look at my average value. And like he's you're like, playing yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's like, you're not taking it. You're the small stuff. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, you yeah. know, it is tough when you have relationships and whatnot as a, a broker owner to be like, here you go, right? Here, oh yeah, you're gonna take over these, right? Like you kind of got to give up your past clients and whatnot to really. Focus it's on hard, your man. I will you tell do, you yeah, that is, tough. but I've gotten to a point where I'm totally fine with it because it's it's looking at the bigger goal. Mm -hmm. But it is really hard, you know. Like I'll have. There's some people you can't pass along, and those are the ones mm -hmm, that I true. still hand to myself I agree. personally, yeah, I agree. right? Yeah. It's just in, impossible. Yeah. Impo like, they will not work with anybody else. They want you. Yeah, and yeah. like even even if I try, like, hey, I got this agent that is uh, they do much more business in this area than no. me, and they're like, yeah, I'd really like to work with you. Or they then, or they you, you give them off, they keep calling you. Well, right yeah. for us, right? Like our our real estate agent relationships that we have, like sometimes it's a it's a tough combo. But like I don't honestly like you're better 
off with him. Right, because he's in the he's office. He can handle all the MRR calls. MRR will give you much more attention than I have to get. Without yeah. a doubt. It's yeah, exactly right. the same thing with me, right? It's a hard like, conversation to have. If I have somebody that is not a close, close friend of mine or somebody that I absolutely cannot pass off. You know you're not going to service them as well. I know wholeheartedly I don't have the time to Bandwidth dedicate thing. to go see homes and things like that. Listings are a different story, right? And the majority of my business was listings. Yeah. Just because, like, for me, my process is really, really tight and efficient now. So yeah. like, I go see a house. Hey, this is what your house is worth. If you don't agree with me, you're probably wrong, and that's okay. <laughs> but I'm not going to take a listing just to throw it out there, right? Yeah, if yeah. you agree with me, we get a sign in the front yard. We market the hell out of it. But it's all automated. Like, our stuff is so – we talk, have talk to, me about, talk to me about your system and process. Yeah, so, like, back to your first question, right? So w- what makes us a little bit different, yeah, right? Yeah. We're kind of like – I like to call us a hybrid in between those two spectrums, right? Mm-hmm. So I set the company up in a sense where I said, how do I get the – like set up where I have the best of the brokerage side of things and the best of the team side of things, but without all the shit in between, yeah. right? Like, yeah, yeah. don't take recognition from the agent. Put your name on your sign. Put you. We have we have some limitations as far as like um the how the logo has to our logo has to be, but that's, that's all like fine. by law anyways, that's right? Fine. Yeah, that's fine. So it's like brand yourself as an agent. Brand yourself as basically your your own business because you're a business owner, right? But within the constraints of the company, but. Then, like with splits and things like that, our splits are actually even a little bit better than most true brokerages. Yeah, but we give leads, technology, support. Like my my agents, they call me like eleven thirty at night. Yeah, every night. Like if you look through my recent calls, I talk to almost every one of my agents almost every single day. Yeah. So it's that that may come down a little bit as we grow, but we're not going to grow in a sense of like I don't want seventy agents by the end of the year. No, bro. It's no. It, you want fifteen awesome. I want badasses. like fifteen to twenty that kill it because with think about this in perspective, right? So last year we had seven agents for the the course of the year uh-huh. and we did more business than most offices that have 70 plus that's wild bro so our average closing per agent is 40 closings per agent wow not like our top wow. agent did 40 like that's our average that's, mm-hmm. that's and, wild well that so. That enhances your growth because that makes it really sexy for a good agent to want to come to you because you're not growing for the sake of growth to have the numbers. You're growing to grow the individuals that work with you. Absolutely. Key yeah. example. So Stacy Taylor right now, it's, it's official, so I can actually say yeah. it. Right? Like Stacey yeah. Taylor was on the show. Yeah. She's a rock star. Rock right? star. Yeah. It took a little while because when you're a smaller company like us, right? I mean, we're small in the sense of number of agents but not mm-hmm. number of business, yep. but it's still a smaller brokerage. We're right. a boutique, boutique, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So, we're kind of very similar in that. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's hard because you get if you're if you have an agent that's with a bigger company like that, right? The mindset that they're fed is like, "Oh, it's better here, it's better here. We're bigger." People people don't care what brokerage you work with for. I'll be honest with you. No, Unless no. it's like some like shoddy, like weird no-name company <laughs> that doesn't have any good branding or anything. But in reality, I found that most people when I go to listen with, they actually appreciate the fact that it is a smaller company, especially for the agent side, because they know there's like less red tape. They know yep. that they're going to work harder. They're not going to get lost in the the sea of the same signs on the street, right? Yep. So yeah. and they're going to well, get the attention. That they value want. add we tell our clients, right? Like when I talk to someone, like, dude, I own I own the company. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do whatever I can, right? But right. That is you that's wanna, another. Do you really want to give your a business red, to no the bank? Tape. It yeah. is right? a hard. Exactly. It is hard too. I actually sometimes um, refrain from telling people that <clears throat> people that I don't know. Like if I have a, a a lead or a client that comes in and I I have the initial conversation with them because sometimes I do I still like to get on the phone of a little you bit. Of course you do. You have the edge, right? Yeah. yeah. So if I have that conversation, I'll refrain from saying it because I feel like I almost put my agent at a disadvantage. Right. Because you're almost like, like I want to work yeah. with the broker. Like, of course. Trust yeah. me, you probably don't. Like, you probably <laughs> yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's got more like, time. He does dude. way more feet, more foot on the ground. He's got more experience, right? Yeah. So or it even makes makes you seem like a smaller shop than you really are because you're like, why, why is this guy why, answering why, the phone? Yeah, why are you answering the phone? Right. I will tell you something that you guys have done a really good job of and I, I notice this stuff because it's you know it's what we do as well but like your branding has been really good your 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 even it comes down to like the logo the idea your the feel of the company like so talk to me how like first of all like like how'd you come up with the name quest like how did you figure out the branding and what, what was your strategy like marketing wise like what are we going to do and it's not like you're on tvs or billboards yeah. you guys are doing it kind of like grassroots yep. social like like actually word of my, like that kind of stuff so Absolutely. talk to me about that yeah so the the company actually my wife 
came up with the name. We were like sitting in the living room going through things. That, yeah. Like, I think it, not like, you know, the rap name generator thing you can do. Yeah. Right? Like, I think yes. it was something like that. Quest Love. Like, that sounds hey, like, great. Yeah. Because, like, when you find a company, right, a name for a company, then you have to immediately go, like, well, is the website do- there? Domain. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Domain. And it wasn't. Yeah. Like, Quest Realty was taken. I've offered them like 100 grand, like 12 times, and they tell they me they won't to take kick it. Rocks. Yeah, yeah. Go, go to QuestRealty.com, look at their website. This it's is probably absolutely garbage. horrendous. Yeah, yeah, right. So, we went with QuestSold.com. It was fine, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, like, for us when we started it the the mindset was like let's build this in a sense where it's it's always a perception of a bigger company correct right even when it was just me it was never like me it was like us yes even though i was the only one there yes and yes. the company and things like that so and people ask me all, i know i've done a good job of it now because i get asked all the time like are you guys national and right. I'm like, yeah yeah, but yeah. we all only over. have one office in <laughs> right, <laughs> right? All over. so it's I, I have to give credit to the name to my wife um and the, the better half yeah yeah 100 percent, without a doubt <laughs> she's listening um <laughs> she might be actually <laughs> mine, doesn't, you, mine doesn't mine doesn't um, right. yeah so it was you know <laughs> setting it up or, or getting to that point it's always just been a bigger mindset right yeah like, put the company in a position where you're you're always looking forward thinking because someday we will be there yeah. right mm-hmm. just we're not there right Live now so it. instead of changing it down the line like just start with it now act as right a, act 100 percent. it's always hard to change things down the road like oh yeah you know like we've been uh with companies where you have your email set up one way and then it's like hey there's oh, there's multiple brads here Right, yeah. like now it's got to be B Weisgerber. Imagine spelling that. That is the one thing it's that I nightmare. that I did from the beginning, thinking I was making things easy. I was like, yeah, you know, Ali at Questsold dot com. Everybody will just have their first name. And then I'm like, we it's, had we had like a, a new agent that started James, and there was an old agent at the office that decided not to do real estate anymore. James, and yeah. when I started his email, like everything was an issue. Yeah, he was setting mm-hmm. up a Zillow account, and he's like. Well, there's already somebody there. I can't log in. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I should have done the <laughs> yeah. initials, right? We, we, we did I feel all, like every startup company goes We did all that. our first names. We all did our first names. And I feel like it's like you, if you get in and you have a first name, that means you're one of the first. You're going to you be there. You yeah. get yeah. stock. It's like a badge. It's like a, a, right. like a four-digit <laughs> NMLS. Yeah, yeah right. Like, yeah. Congratulations. You made it. And then if you don't, oh, well. You yeah, right. right. If you got a, if you got an initial in there, you're not one of the few. You're not an OG. But the branding and stuff like that, you know, for me, like I'm, that's another thing that I'm really, really anal about. Like. I even tell my agents, like, listen, if you're going to do marketing or advertising, right, and and you want to change any piece of it, we have, like, a full marketing center. Like, when I say systems, man, we have everything an agent can ever want and then things that they don't even know are out there to make their life super easy and efficient. So, like, we have a full marketing center where they go in, they click a button, and it will give them social media posts, flyers, um, listing packets for sales sense, whatever they need. If they want to change of it, I'm like, just get it in front of me because for for me, it's not about like I don't want you to change it, but it hurts everybody because we are at a, we're at a phase with the company where it's a growth phase, right? Mm-hmm. We have to be consistent with our branding, right, so that it continues to grow the company and it's better for everybody. Yeah, no, so, you yeah. have to you have to have a consistency on that because it me- means a lot. And the more like your your team and we believe this too, they have to represent your brand. They're, they're representing your brand. And, like, you better wear that, like, proudly. If you're not proud to wear the brand yeah. on some level, then you probably don't deserve to be here. You're shitting Without in the pond. Don't because, shit in my pond. And this goes back to, like, what you said, right, with recruiting the right people, right? Uh-huh. Find the people that have the same mindset that are bought into the company because they know, like, we're small enough at some point, like, these people could be, you know, team leaders, things like that, where, like, they're running their own smaller company inside of the company as we grow. They have to be bought in, right? Yeah. And it, and they should be because I'll be honest with you, with the the value proposition that we have and the amount of benefits that we can give to agents, it really is a privilege to work at our company. Yeah. I'll be very honest. That's with how you. I feel. Yeah, yep. yeah. like, like I, you're lucky as fuck to work with us. I wholeheartedly know it is, and I tell them, listen, if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, I could go recruit probably 50 agents if I spent the next two weeks. It's yeah. not that hard. Hey. You're going to pay less to your company than you pay over there. You're going right. to get training. You're going to get more leads than you could ever want, more systems to make it easier than you're ever going to want. You have the nicest office in Metro Detroit. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. And you're going to hate your life. Yes. Because then <laughs> it's going to be like agent, 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 agent. And, not, and and the majority of them don't fit our culture and our mindset. They're not down or right, bro. And then it's like a, it's just a thousand questions constantly that – don't I think I asked. think that comes back from where we were from. I mean, to be to be fair, I know that we, we go back there because we have that common thread. Yeah, yeah. But when we were there, there were the downer rides that we were like like there. We we rep the brand. We we kicked ass. We all fought together. And the ones that didn't fit in, like you'd see people just come and go. And I was like, dude, if you weren't part <coughs> of what I'm 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 rolling right now. And yeah. If you're not in on that, yeah. I, I need you out of my like way. Fighting the man, right? Like, Tom, I don't, La- I don't know if you know Tom Lauer. Tom yeah. like came on our team, and the first thing I said to him, he came over. He was like shadowing me. He goes, I go, listen, dude. 
chances are I'm not going to talk to you for six months because you probably won't make it six months. And then he's like, what? What does that mean? And he goes, he's like, what do you mean? I go, you probably, most people are going to make it. So, so just. I always knew it because like when people would come on, and, and we had a team where like everybody was like very similar when I was at Quicken. Yeah. And we would get new people on the team, right? And there was it wasn't this like stringent uh, interview process back then. It was like no. you did an interview with somebody you and then you got you a have phone a pulse? call. Yeah. Like it was a phone interview and then a, an interview. Fuck in that, person. dude! I went through five interviews. We'll talk about that really. Interview. Oh, it was a long thing. For oh me. man, I had I had like a phone inter- I had an interview with uh, you remember Nader Carsa? Yeah, I'm like one of my favorite yeah. people on earth. Yeah. He's he's like the reason I am who I am today, pretty much. Yeah. But um, I had an interview with him and then he called me afterward and was like, "Sell me on a product on my voicemail." I was like. I was like 22. You don't know what, what does that doing? even yeah, mean? What does that mean? I, dude? Like I was like, okay, so I just like kept talking and yeah. talking and talking on yeah. this guy's voicemail, and he called me back. He was like, yeah, okay, can you start Monday? I was like, what? I got the job, right? You know what so, happened to me? So they told me I didn't have the job. Uh, Brian Apple. I, I went through a few interviews, uh, but something happened. There's somebody had a baby, so I did like go. I interviewed Brian Apple. They told me I didn't have the job. I called Brian Apple back. I go, you're, you, you're making a big fucking mistake. Dude. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, wow, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. All right, do. you're hired. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. But we it. used to know, like, people would come on the team, right? And, like, I knew, like, the first day they started. Because they would ask the wrong questions. Yeah. They would come over to me and, like, yeah. you know, hey, what, what am I going to make here? I'm like, yeah. you're not even, like, anywhere no. near Where's that. Where's the popcorn, it's almost, like, yeah. 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 it's almost like <laughs> war, right? You got all, like, the ba- battle-hardened soldiers, and then you get, like, the replacements who want the action, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, without like, a doubt. get... Like you're I'll killed s- if you. I'll see you for the next talking. week. When then. I when we first started, when I first started, I, I, I was I was obsessed, bro. I was dreaming mortgages, right? Because like I wanted to succeed so bad. But anyways, but yeah, there is something. So my my question to you because of that is, we lived in an environment that was so micromanaged on some level, right? Very over the top micromanaged. The eye in the sky. Yeah, and then I, and then I went to UWM, which was a little bit like that too, and I d- made a conscious decision that I never wanted to live that life again because. I just wanted self motivated. I'll help you as much as you want, but I'm not going to force you to do anything. And I know we talked about this, and you kind of have the same mentality now. So I, is that kind of like a, a part of you that's like, I, I didn't like it, and I don't want to have to do that again? Absolutely. Yeah. For me, I, and I tell my agents this all the time, right? Like, I'm never going to expect you to do something that I wouldn't do or yeah. like put you in a position that I really wouldn't want to be in, right? So, and some, some of that is pushing them to do things outside of their comfort zone, and that's fine, right? But, like, I, I'm the mindset, like, give people the tools, give them the training, give them the push, and help them. Like, if you try to force people to do things, not only are they not going to do them, they're going to resent them, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. like, we, and it becomes a poison. We as a company, we could definitely do more, like, um, prospecting, right? Yeah. But we're, we're in a unique position where we have a tremendous amount of referral partners that I've built that keep everybody very busy, yeah. and the agents have built such a fast uh, past client basis that they get a lot of referrals and things so they don't need to do it as much yeah but like that lack of need almost hinders them yeah because right. they don't do it i right? think for us it's more of a reminder it's like hey dude don't forget what got you there right? yeah. well yeah, yeah i mean I, I think wholeheartedly what goes around comes around right and if as a owner of a company you can procure someone grow them and put them in a position where they have their own business right yes. because as an employee you got to think like my team leader got indicted for fraud tomorrow. <laughs> Would I be okay? Yeah. Right. And most of them could probably answer the question with no. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. I'd have to go find another team or I'd have to do something else. But, like, to be able to grow someone that can leave, maybe start their own mortgage company, whatever, right? Like, you never know what how that will pay you back and, down the and road. And you have to right. – th- that's a great, great thing you, have you said. To <clears throat> you have to You have to embrace it, but also you have to – even for me as a business owner, right? Like, I, the, the idea of – let people do what they're going to do, and some people are going to do more, right? That's fine. But as a business owner, you also have to embrace, like, I'm going to give you all the tools. I'm going to train you and put you in a position where if you wanted to do it yourself, you could. But then also set the company up in a standpoint where there's no reason for them to ever want to. Yes. Like, go ask any of my right. agents. We take like, the BS off your plate yeah, for go you on, to basically go be your own business Go on owner. Facebook Messenger and message all my agents and say, hey, like, do you want to be – do you want to take Ollie's job? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. they're no, all gonna yeah. laugh no, yeah. right and that's, yeah. like, no, that's the reality of it you know set. i don't think people understand when they do go on their own like on the mortgage side it's like are you ready no for idea. call reports are you ready for yeah. accounting are you ready, are you for, ready for clients for are you headaches. ready to put together Have, all this bullshit yeah. that honestly is worth the split 100 percent. they have yeah. they have no <laughs> idea value right my yeah. agents do though that's the difference right because we're such a close-knit group and we're in the office right and they see it like I, there's there's no there's so much visibility in my office like yeah. That whole open door thing, like, I literally never close my door. So it's like, 
We don't even have. They <laughs> they know my accounting system. They know all of it, right? They see it all because well, what's the what well, do I? Have everybody to has hide? numbers. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, like, yeah. Especially in my industry, well, though. Because your family, right? In real estate, this is a funny industry because nobody can hide behind anything. No, you, right? you click in two seconds. I know what you did. Yeah, yeah. So like, you got these people, and it's funny because you have this perception, right? Social media is so funny. And I have to kind of like um, educate newer agents because they're like, man, these people, look at this guy, look at this guy. <laughs> He's killing and I'm like, okay, great. Now let me click a button well, on my system and I'll show you like what business they do. And I'll be honest with you, I find most of the people that are like these rock stars on social media, they do no business, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, like no business. We had, right. we had a team meeting once and one of my agents was like, this is the agent that I really want to be like. And they do what I do in the area I want to do. And I'm like, okay, great. Let's look at it. So we, we were actually at Top Golf. I pulled it up on my phone. And it was like, it was like seven transactions the last year. Yeah, bro. I was like, do you see? I was like, they don't even have any money left over because they spent so much on that uh, right, videography yeah, that yeah. they did. Right. Right. Like, I will tell you that, that there there has to be a good mix and of both. There's silent killers. Yeah. Yes. Then there's silent Most killers. Of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I Most think the you killers have to, are silent. You have to utilize social today, though. Oh, I, you, yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely. not saying anything about it, but I'm saying like, but utilize them, yeah. it when you have business to put out there, right? Yeah, like, right. hey, I did this. Not like, hey, look at look my at me, suit. Look at me, look at me, look it's at me. So nice. My, I got my red bottoms on. Blah blah blah. Like, okay, cool. But the like, red I'm getting out of my I don't Bugatti. Know, my wife tells them right, that, I that I rented. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Right. <laughs> so no, dude, I think you're doing some really interesting stuff. I think anybody, there's there's a certain person that makes sense to work at a, at a company like yours. And I, I love the fact that you're being judicious about your growth. I don't th- – because, dude, in our business, honestly, it's the opposite. Give me agents. Yeah, give yeah. me agents. Give me agents. Give me agents. Give me agents. They don't give a fuck. Like, right? Uh, and then that, and then all of a sudden they've got 70 agents, 80 agents. They don't know how to manage it. People, People get lost. People get lost. Yeah. Or they've got such a team mentality. Their splits are so bad, and they're giving away the house. And all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute. I'm bringing in all my business, and I don't get paid for it? Like, you know what I mean? I, I, have, agents, I have agents that used to be on teams yeah. that – even when they came in and they sat down with me and told me what their their setup was with their old team, like even me, I was blown away. Yeah. Like I couldn't fathom. I was like, how did you do this? Yeah. Like giving them 70% of the commission. But some right. of these and places, like, I will tell you that some of these places work because they have learned a way to take someone from the streets and turn them into a, a real estate agent. So again, there's a, there's a place for everybody. Yes. Right. right? So if it could be might, a good place to start. I mean, look at like, on our perspective, right? Like, if we were to talk to a Quicken banker, what? Bro, you I get paid right. four hundred exactly. bucks to do that loan. Ali, yeah. we, we, like, we'd close fifty but, loans and make like we, we thought we were killing it. For they're making <laughs> w- they make way more money than we used to though. Like yeah. today, oh, yeah, today. yeah. It, the agent, you think the oh my god, dude, we like, used to make Green Bar. Yeah, but okay, so they make more money than our average loan yeah, yeah, back yeah. then, right? right? With Green Bar, yes. Remember when they took that away? Bro, I would float my <laughs> whole pipeline and do a one-day lock. You remember, so we, we had a guy on our team. Um, I'm not going to throw any into there, right? But this guy was like, we used to call him the Green Bar King. Like every <laughs> it was, every month it was either like he was going to have a panic attack because he floated. Dude. Oh, begin the rates went up. Yeah. Or he was like buying a Lambo. Yeah. That was yeah. Dakota <laughs> Dennison. Remember Dakota Dennison? I don't. Okay, so he was on Apple's team and he oh, yeah, literally names, he drove. I like, yeah. I like He's a rock star probably. Travis's brother. It's yeah, dude. I know who he is. So Dakota had a nice car. He drove into the office at Quicken and he his license plate, he had gotten a vanity one. It was G R N B A R. Wow, dude, dude, what's his he's name? he's living it right? Yeah. Like he's owning it. I like, dude, it. he got blown up. They're like, you oh, can't yeah. do that, bro. It's like, like it's so bad because just so the audience understands, back in the day, and I'm this is me just being transparent. We didn't know you. You could you could charge someone more money. Like let's say rates were at like today, let's say it's four and a quarter, and I gave you four and a half. Well, there's a yield there, and as a loan officer, you would make more money by charging someone more. That's illegal now. Totally yeah, illegal. Yeah, I remember that the goes day, to the client. The day that went away, I was like, oh, "What do we do? Yeah. How do we make? How do we make money?" And, and, and then I look <laughs> back and I'm like, "How did what we did do we that? do? It was crazy. Yeah, man. What did we didn't we know any do? better. Yeah, but that's it, you're right. We were young. We, and by the way, we were, we were selling higher rates as it was <laughs> by far yeah. at that point. So, so all right. On, on the topic of vanity plates, real quick, like don't get vanity plates. Just so you guys know, why well, you, no. yours says yeah. Questy or Quest? It's just Quest TTT. But like you, you don't realize until you have it, and then I'm like, and my car's kind of fast and i have to get places i'm like i was like a couple minutes late today yeah yeah so like every time now that i'm flying i'm like man everybody knows who i am you are yeah, like yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way they're mistaking that, this car to me for somebody it's quest else asshole <laughs> yeah, right my, my biggest fear is like going to a listing appointment and then being like 
you cut me off last week. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Dude, you're right. You cannot get advantage. You're like, I mean, no, I'm you not. You drive like to. a complete I, yeah, I decided not bitch. to. Bitch. That's, that's, why, I, that's why I won't put uh, a company logo, like a sticker or anything. I'm except you have uh, our, uh, our company hat in your, on your No, I pull it down. Like a fucking, they can't see you so down. fast. They Bullshit. Can't even I see, see you driving down the street with a cig hanging out of your mouth yeah, sideways with that right on the front. I'm like, you look like such a truck. I'll put it down. I'll put up someone else's logo on there. That's great. All right, we got a few more minutes, so I do want to get in some quick topics real quick. Yeah. So, and we'll, we'll circle back. I want people to know how they can get a hold of you real quick. For sure. So, I just want to talk about how fucking dumb news is. Uh, I'm sorry. because Ooh. So, I was looking at the topics to talk about today. So, literally, this is like back-to-back news articles from uh, CNBC and NBC. They're the same fucking company, yeah. right? Uh, mortgage, this was yesterday. Mortgage rates are low. Here's how to figure out if you should refinance. Call uh, a banker. Weekly, weekly mortgage application. This is and this is an hour ago. Weekly mortgage applications fall as the highest rates in a month. So they're, the contradictory. They're, it's, oh, the, so I want the audience just to understand how like behind or untrue. It's all it, when you read something, even if it's on CNBC or Squ- like when you see this stuff, they're not people in the industry. They don't. They're just reporting for someone to read it. Yeah. It's but like click at the end of the day, man. Well, it's not even the industry. Honestly, matter, though, if though. you look at both those articles, right? Someone's living by the day. Yes. And right. someone's living by the reality. So mortgage rates yeah. yeah. are low. What's your headline refi. for the day, right? But yeah. Like, that right? kind of stuff. Like, does it honestly? Does it really matter for somebody that's like going to try to find maybe for a refinance, right? But for somebody that's going to try to buy a fi- find a house, like, do you really care? No, you're buying a house because you want a man. house. Like, yeah. You just want the lowest rate at the moment. And that's that's one mistake I think I used to make as a banker was like I I thought everything was so focused. On that, but now as a, as a real estate agent, I see that they don't really care, man. Like no, most of no. them, they don't really they even just want think about it. It's they want to be taken care let of. Let me find it. Let me well, find it. I mean, let, me be, and let it be fair. The best yeah, thing right? about a mortgage is until they get that contract. <laughs> like with a house, you either have. Bro, it. Are you going to try to be a broker fee? <laughs> What's this compliance? Fee? Well, dude, like with a house, you have it right until you sell it. With a mortgage. You don't have to get have rid of that it same mortgage. Want. Six months. I mean, right. right now we're doing mortgages we wrote six months ago. We're doing yeah. refinances yeah. and dropping it. A lot, and of people, it, a lot of people don't know that, though. Same thing with insurance. I yeah. tell people all the time, like, people yeah. dwell Shop so much three days before closing. Like, I, I, I'm like, you have to get your insurance into your loan officer. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. I got to find the right one. I'm like, no, just, just get it. Get and then, like, a week after closing, you can change whenever you want. Whenever yeah. you want. Get, right. get your insurance. You don't lose any money. Yeah. It is funny, like, the engineer type. It's like, dude. Oh you are going God. to lose this house. I have my spreadsheet. But I have my here. spreadsheet. Yeah. And I need to <laughs> got three different yeah. spreadsheets. I talk to each you other. You are going to lose this so house. So far, I have 12 companies I check with, but I want to really get to 20. Like, yeah. I feel like, uh, I, what is this $100? And it's like, sometimes dude, the best thing that I can do for that client and myself, you know, at that moment is just let them free. Listen, if you have, if I'm like one of six you're looking at, just. Let's not work together. Give them the takeaway. That's all you care about. all the time, man. Yeah. yeah, you know what? You might be better off over there with a little bit less fees this is the, less experience. This yeah. is the reality. You will always find someone cheaper. Like always. if you Like there's internet lenders out yeah. there. Like, I'm not the cheapest. I'm not the cheapest. So think about I'm this good, in though. perspective for you right. guys, right? This is some of the differences that are harder on my side of the world now. Yeah. Is Then it was like you were, you're fighting against maybe a couple hundred bucks, maybe a quarter interest rate. I'm fighting against people that want to do percentages less yes that yeah, yeah. or a 500 just flat want to keep keep <laughs> oh it's you know full full service no it's not no, it's man not, come bro. on like you you're putting a sign in a front yard you're not doing anything after the fact but the hard part is and i don't blame people the ploy now is very very good so these people believe it and then there's there's they don't know any better until they're 60 days in and yeah what can almost and they're be calling me back like oh i shouldn't have done that is let's right. say it truly is wrong. equal right three percent three percent right like it's going to cost you the same why do I want to work with you yeah, versus who's, the other guy, right? Better, and then you actually have to sell record. something other than the money part. Without mm-hmm. a doubt. And I think that's Which where you're going to see. You're either going to shine or fail. You're going to see a lot of people exit the industry. I promise you, man. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to happen shot. really quick. The On people, both sides. Yeah. Yes. That don't have the, the value proposition, right? The people that truly don't have value I think it's to already bring. Happening. It is. It is. And that's why you're seeing all these different um, employees. Like, people yeah. are starting teams. Schemes. I always say it's so funny yeah, yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. that's like not cut out for for real estate, like they'll either start a team and try uh-huh. to get other people to work under them uh-huh. or like they'll become a trainer. They're always looking for the shiny right. object. Like, oh, I'm, a, I'm a coach now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to open my own. People don't want to work. Right. Well, I'm going to hire. I'm going to hire. I'm going to hire. I'm like, this person yesterday, like, Messed up the mayo on my burger, right? Like put mayo on a burger. Yeah. I didn't want mayo on. Get people. You're gonna hire them to do to, this. Get like, people to do the things that you can't do, right? right? Yeah, and that'll work out real great. And then take the majority of the money. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, hey man, you you got to work. You got to put the time. And in. you'll find people that will do it. 
but they won't do it that long. Yeah. Well, that's right? a, that's mm-hmm. actually why I won't hire a quick in the LO to do what we do. It's totally different. It's a different language. When and you know this because you transitioned, right? Going from transactional. You to wouldn't a, hire me. You, I would hire you because okay. you're cute. Uh, <laughs> you have a great shot. That deep ultimately, voice. Ultimately, yeah. like it, that was Today's what I was going to say earlier. Like you could have closed two thousand loans at Quicken, but what we do, at least on our end, the way totally we're set different. up as a it's model, different. Is it's a different, different animal, man. Like, I mean, I don't really have a big book of leads. But here's the you deal, right? Like the, that's it. I'm, I'm of the mindset, like, and even with me, real estate, right? There's different different things. Don't mean they're wrong. Right. No. Right. So a, like yeah. there's people that really need to work with a, a local brokerage like you guys. Right. Yeah. And have that. And then there's people that their their file it just needs to go in. It needs to be quick. It needs to be l- like less communication, maybe even like an online mortgage thing. Yeah. And that, that might work great for them. Maybe they don't have the time. Right. So it, well, it's the same thing with our industry. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like clients like there's some clients that. Maybe don't want uh, the the attention that we give to care. our clients, right? It's just care, like, yeah. hey, get, but they do need it. They do need it. They just but don't, they don't know they do. It's just like, hey, just get me in. The, nowadays, it's like you're a door opener, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah, get yep. me yeah, in the yeah. door. Get yeah. me in the door. They don't realize even on the buy side of things, right? Like you need that experience because what happens when like you go to an inspection? Mm-hmm. If you don't have a good agent, they're just gonna lay down when the listing agent tells them no when they ask for things. <laughs> right. The appraisal comes in low; they're just gonna lay down. So, oh, yeah. sorry, the the seller they said they yeah. couldn't do this. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to have somebody that knows what they're doing. Not like, and there's it, it a fine line there, right, between like being a negotiator and arguing. Mm-hmm. Yes, because you'll yes, just kill yeah. things way faster yeah. arguing. Yeah. So well, that's what I think. The and this is the, what I'm gonna tell the audience is they need to understand that the the value of a real estate agent today, especially on the buyer side. Um, they're not going to f- probably find the house for you because it's going to be on Zillow and you're going to see it probably before they even see it. That's just not going to happen. The value proposition for an agent today is negotiating, dealing with the contract, protecting you. They're basically, it'd be like, again, I've said this before, it'd be like going to trial and representing yourself. Yeah. But also being available, right? Yeah. Like don't have a part time, like my agents. We don't, we don't have part-time agents, no, right? you can't. Right. Because it's a fast market. Right? I want to see this house. Well, you know what? I'm actually up north with my family right now, blah, blah, blah. You were up north like the last four weekends. What's going on here, yeah. right? That you're losing homes or because is, your agent doesn't do this full-time. Well, I, I get out of work at 5, right? It's like, wait, what? I shut up. I swear to God, my biggest pet peeve is I call people's voicemails, and this is like very common that they'll their voicemails will say, like, I return calls – uh, after Friday at 6 p.m., I return calls on bro, Monday. Bro, bro, I even bro. I even see people that have in, agent? Their, in their listing Everybody, remarks. Yeah, 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 yeah. In time. their listing Whoa. remarks. Please don't call on Sundays. All offers that are submitted after Friday at 6 p.m. will be presented Monday. And I'm like, what? First off, it's like completely against the law. You have it's, to present it as soon as dude, you have it. Listen, but people don't answer the phones. Who does that? That's crazy. That, like, yeah, I'm pretty bad at it too. Well, no, we. But either that or you, you just call, call back. Like, like text you, me. Text you. Call. To don't find, leave find me a voicemail, man. Like, <laughs> don't ever <laughs> leave me a voicemail. Just call me, and then get if I love don't when answer, I get a two minute voicemail. Get oh. voice to text. I, I, I just have voice to text. It. It's the same thing. Yeah, but then you look at it. And Your it's voicemail's like, full constantly, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, those yeah. those long voicemails, they just eat it up. I delete them. I'm like, I'll just call you back, man. I don't have time. I don't have time. I just don't understand like how someone could even leave a voicemail that long. No, and not be like. Hey, so, <laughs> this is, uh, well, yeah. we were thinking so, this, blah blah blah. I mean, I was I, driving by and I seen this. Hold on, let me get the address real quick. And then they don't yeah. get out of the car. <laughs> and However, then, I guess some credit up. to people who've left voicemails for thirty years before there was, you know. Yeah. Listen, the, the best is when they they don't. If you're up. over forty five, you can leave me a voicemail. Yeah. 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 But, but if you're make under, it quick. Just, just, just te- texting is the way to communicate. Yeah, yeah, though. Everything's text. So I was going to talk about this other article, but I'm not. We don't. We're running out of time because we, you know, we talked a lot about you. Uh, <laughs> which is the point <laughs> which is the point of the show so um, but so we do this thing uh, called three questions we do it on every show um, and so they're totally random the first one's not random we always ask the same one he knows okay. he watches the show oh yeah uh, I, I'm just letting him look I don't know the other two though so no the other two are, are different um, so what scares Ali Berry failure yeah. Honestly, man, and I think it's more now when I ha- since I have kids. Yeah. Like before, it was like it was, it was yeah. me and my wife. Even before we were married, it was like, hey, we'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if I need to go to Home Depot and go back to the paint department, I can do that, right? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. it is what it is. If I need to sell cell phones again, it's fine. We'll figure it out. I'll hustle it. Now with girls, it's like it's such a bigger picture with my kids. Yeah, like, I got bro. college. Yeah. I got like it's fucking uh, terrifying everything, man. It's you know. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. dude, you can't fail. But then I, I, I'm really big too. Like one of my favorite things is like, it is what it is, right? Mm-hmm. I actually, just bought it's a funny. sign to put in my office. Like, you, we stress so much about things we can't control, man. That's you just roll right. with it, do what you can on a daily basis, and then just roll with it. And like, I don't stress about a lot. My wife will tell you she, like, I, she gets mad at me because I don't stress about things. Chill. Yeah, yeah. But when I do stress about certain things, it's like 
over, over the top. The top. Yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, and that, uh, that's the thing that fear that I have fear is sells, just sells like that. I'll I'll start stressing about something and be like, dude, dude, nobody cares. <laughs> did you die? <laughs> He's did like, you dude, die? dude, did do you did I offend you? I'm like, no, no man, man. Fuck matter, <laughs> but. Right. One of the biggest lessons I think you can learn is talk to someone who's been wiped out and came back, right? Yeah, bro. And oh, I, I yeah. feel, I honestly, I feel like I did. I know, like I'm not the, I'm not the story of like I had three pennies in my bank, right, blah blah, because my wife had income. But um, well, bro, we went from like making a lot of money, and you think you could do that tomorrow after you leave, and then yeah. you realize that money doesn't come that quick. Like I, I was at a point where like I was working at home doing that thing, and it, I wasn't make. I felt failure at that point because yeah. there was a moment where I was like, "Oh my god, what am I doing?" Like my wife is like working every day, yeah. doing mortgages and crushing it still, and I'm like trying to do this new thing, and I'm not. It's not catching on as fast as I want it to. Yeah. So I I hit that bottom point and was like, "All right, that you can never go back there." Yeah. Right. Like so, I, it's almost created like. But, but that's the, that's right. the funny thing about failure. You also need it. Yeah, you you one thousand percent do, but not full failure. Like you still have to roll with it. We probably all worked and sat next to someone either at Quicken or UWM or whatever. And when they start, they make you know eighteen G salary, and it's like, man, what what did you do before, right? Yeah, you could have you could have worked at Nordstrom, or you could, and they're like, yeah, I had a you know an insurance company, a title company, a mortgage company. We were making like two three million dollars a year. Yeah, I got wiped out, and it's gone. Well. Dude, I made twenty four thousand when I worked at Shore my first year after making a lot more than that. So, anyways, we got to move on to the yeah, next yeah. question. If you could switch <laughs> bodies and live in somebody else's shoes for one month, in who would it be? Not this guy, uh, Elon Musk, without a doubt. Really? Yeah, I mean the really? stuff that that guy gets to see and yeah. like I'm a suit. People don't know us about me. Wait, wait, like, are we I'm, talking experiences or just bodies? No, no, well, no. Well, no, like, if it's bodies, I'm like, uh, no, the, no, no, no. I don't no, think no, you no, choose no. Elon. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> like, yeah. Really? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. He's like, he's just no, fell off a little bit later. For, for like a week. Yeah, right? it was yeah. For, okay. for sure without a doubt, man. Yeah. The guy, I mean, think about it. He... He he's like, sends spaceships. He's a mad scientist. Yeah. Up yeah. There, yeah. Right? Like, he's actually like a villain. He really is. And if you watch him talk, like, I'm a big dork. I just watched like a four hour YouTube really? yeah, yeah, yeah. like investor meeting on him the other day at like two in the morning. And when you hear this guy speak, it's almost hard to listen to him because yeah. his brain is so far past where we are. Yeah. So I think I just want to be like, I'd want to be in his body just so I like could understand his intellect yeah. and, and like slow it down to be like, Oh, what if you were in his body? He knows everything that's going to happen. What if you're in his body was just your, your brain and you're just like, uh, no, I don't want that. Yeah. I, I'll take my right. body. That's what I thought brain. the question I'll was. That. Right, we, got, we got like one more minute. Just yeah. cause like, we, I got to go, dude. So, uh, last question is if like today, like tomorrow, the United States like fell apart and you had to move to another country in the world, where would you move and why? Ooh, I like this question. Uh, Hawaii doesn't count. It's so not a country. No. Australia, Australia, I've never been there, it's but continent. it's like, I mean, the girls are good looking there. Yeah, what is a country there? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I mean, Australia, yeah. the continent. I'll go there. It's yeah. it's a big island. I, I've never been there, Strong so it might be a wild. really bad decision because I heard there's like the majority of things kill you there. Yeah. Dingo ate my but baby. All right. I haven't traveled a lot, so for me, it's like I've been like the Florida, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like if <laughs> which is a if different the U.S. Country. is gone, <laughs> exactly. like, is I'll go to Canada. It's yeah. close, Florida, it's similar. I know people there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, Ali, tell the audience how they can get a hold of you, man. Uh, obviously, you're doing some really good stuff. Really appreciate you being on the show, dude. And, yeah. And like, uh, we could have been here like two hours for sure, without him. a doubt. So, so I appreciate you guys having me. I honestly do. If um, if you're out there and you want a different opportunity, yeah. right? Reach out. I mean, easiest way is either uh, my email, Ali at QuestSoul.com. Or sells five eight six five five seven eight five three eight. Just call me directly. There's no recruiter. Or There's text no uh, text. Him. Yeah, text me. Text him. Or just call, but don't, if leave, you, a don't leave a voicemail. All right. Uh, <laughs> Unless it's like three seconds. Don't even do that. That's no, more don't annoying. Do that. This That's show went by faster than any other show we've had in a long. That was really good, man. Thank you so no, much. No, thank Honestly, you guys. It's been man. awesome. Really awesome. like proud of you. Like I like watching you do your stuff. Proud man. of you guys too, man. It's yeah. the same thing. It's, it's, it's awesome. reciprocal. It's a family, dude. So uh, Jessica, thank you for sticking around a little later today. You're welcome. Thanks, Jessica. You're the best. So, all right, everybody. Obviously, subscribe. Find us on all the places you can find podcasts. Rate the podcast. Rate it. We, yeah. we, we like. We like. We Why really not? appreciate. The smash, media. smash the like button. Smash, That's what you smash that like. We actually have some good ratings. We have like eight five stars. So it's good. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. That flew by. It flew.